is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. It is the 2023 BYU football season preview special in Studio B. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. As promised, the head football coach Kalani Satake with us in the Cougar Council Room. Coach, welcome back. 11 days away. How you feeling right now as the season bears down? Let's go. I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. The guys are excited for the game and for the season's to start, you know, so... Uh, I've had a really good fall camp so far, and, and uh, we'll utilize all the time to get ready for it and make sure that we're ready to perform at our best. A lot of familiar names on this uh, team, but half the roster is new. You brought in 31 transfers. What have you learned about this group so far? Well, I think the group is a lot closer than, than I, I ever anticipated, and that's a, that's a huge compliment to the players that are already on the team before uh, we had all the newcomers uh, arrive. But... Uh, the, the culture, um, the leadership that we're seeing from all of them, and, and just having even the new guys uh, that have one year of eligibility left feel comfortable enough to, to lead and to speak. In order for uh, uh, leadership to, to take place, you need guys that are willing to follow and, and guys that are humble enough to listen, and, and we have that on our team right now, and I feel really good about the, the overall feeling with everyone and the camaraderie and the, brother, the brotherhood. You may have just answered the question, but uh, if not, is there anything else you've learned about this team from the time that camp started to now that maybe you weren't sure about when camp convened mm -hmm. and, and you got going? We were always worried about how physical the team's going to be. And so we, uh, I know I have coaches and coordinators that want to get the guys in a uh, physical type of play. And so we, we did that. We, we had a physical camp, had physical spring ball. And so... Uh, I, I can say that the, the players have stepped up and, you know, they're a physical group. So we'll see what, what happens on, on game night. But I feel really pleased with, with uh, our level of physicality and uh, the aggression and the, the, their willingness. And I think sometimes it, it, it spilled over into a little bit of, you know, some melees and stuff like that. But it's okay. <laughs> we were able to control it. And, uh, and you know, sometimes get guys make mistakes. And, and, uh, but we'll fix them all and make sure that there's none of that going on during the game. Offensively, uh, a lot of excitement around some new pieces in Keaton Slovis, quarterback, Aiden Robbins, and then an offensive line that was really good last year. Aaron Roderick has said, hey, we, we are deeper, uh, and you brought in a lot of transfers in, in that area. Is it safe to feel uh, and expect like this offense could approximate or maybe even be better than what it was last year? Well, I think that's hard to always compare when, when it's a different schedule, you know, but uh, going into, I think what A-Rod's feeling is, Going into the, the, the season now, I, I see him a little bit more confident than uh, we definitely when we were in January. But uh, I, I think he's feeling really good about how the team's going, and uh, that's probably why he was able to speak so um, bravely on those type, those terms in, in the offense. But uh, from what I'm seeing, it, it's 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 delivering so far. Uh, but all all matters on game night. That that's when you had 12 opportunities to do it, and that's that's the time to show and. Right now, it's look, looking promising. Kalani Satake is with us on BYU Sports Nation. It's our season preview special. Much has been said about Jay Hill and his impact and the energy that he brings to the defensive side of the ball. How do you know as a head coach when the defense is performing at the level you want it to be performing at? Like, what are you looking for and saying, yes, this is how I want the defense to be? Yeah, I think the main thing is that when you're looking at, and, and this is for uh, us as a team working against each other, uh, if one side is winning all the time, that's a bad sign. Um, and, but especially if one side's really, really good and has tons of uh, veterans, and that means that we didn't we didn't um, build a talent gap on the other side. And and what we have is you'll have some things start off where the offense is doing really, really well, and then the defense responds. And then uh, some other moments when the scrimmage where the defense starts off really strong, and then the offense responds. So there's a lot of good back and forth and maybe at the end of the day you can say this is probably the offense won the overall but there's not this huge discrepancy of offense killed it defense was horrible defense killed it offense was horrible it's now a little bit more balanced out and and the battles are are actually going back and forth it's series to series and uh, that's a good sign and then and, and Jay Hill's an, an aggressive person and uh, that's that's how he thinks and that's how he coaches and so he if there's a mistake, he's going to fix it right on the spot, um, which is which is nice, you know. And, and and have him do it, and I don't have to. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> My voice is a lot better now than it's ever been, 
But if you listen to Jay, his voice is gone. It's mid-season. Yeah. Voice. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you've heard my voice be raspy in in uh, you know fall camp around this time, but uh, I seem to be able to sing my songs and have a you know be able to be okay. But I'm not gargling with lemon juice and stuff like that. But, uh, Jay's voice is hammered, which is a good sign. That is a good sign. How many position battles are still going on where you are determining the starters, mm -hmm. and how many are uh, determined? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's some that you feel really comfortable with it being set. Um, but it, the competition always has to happen. I, I feel like there's got to be, uh, nobody can feel s too comfortable. And once they feel comfortable and complacent, which is human nature sometimes, I think you have to make the decision to make a switch. And so when you have that, you have that mindset, a guy like Keaton knows that the other quarterbacks are going to be ready uh, whenever their number is called. and, and uh, but we don't want him to feel like there's pressure, but he's going to put pressure on himself to perform. And so in these other position groups where there's playing time that they're battling for, that's going to go well into the season. Um, and maybe we feel like we have more than one starter at that spot. and We feel like we can uh, play more people. But uh, at the same time, um, someone's got to win the spot. And I think we want to be able to cement some starting spots so that guys can know that they're the definite guy. And there's only so many reps that you can do in practice. And so we need to make sure that the ones get all the reps and, and uh, that there's a battle maybe for two and three to, to get the next reps if, if uh, the, an opportunity happens that way. Along those lines, everyone likes to talk about depth and fall camp. Oh, such a buzzword. Oh, it's the, <laughs> oh, the depth. Everyone feels deeper. How do you quantify that? How do you know if you're actually deeper? Because it feels like this team is deeper in the amount of talent you have brought. Um, and it's not with the starters per se to me. It's with the twos where you go, hey, our twos are better than we were last year but you really kind of have to wait to the games maybe to to see that that guy was closer to being a starter than you think how do you kind of quantify that yeah I think that's the goal for the coaches is to put as much stress on them and that's why we threw the playbook at them right from the beginning uh, and try to install as much as we could uh, to see how they would respond and then you kind of gauge it from the mistakes that they make uh, we had our scrimmage last Saturday um, and a scrimmage flash practice and and there were some mistakes that were uh, not normal, but but given those re extra reps, those twos and threes are able to get those reps, and we held out a couple guys, and and uh, nothing's more evident of of needing needing improvement than the film, <laughs> and so when mistakes did happen, uh, we want to make sure that we address it. But then you can also count on guys that, hey, when 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 it's live and it's time to play, we need to know we can count on you. So, um, missed assignments, things like that, we can't count on it. <clears throat> and there was uh, some administrative mistakes that we definitely need to improve on. Okay, as you look at the first two games with Sam Houston, uh, again, 11 days from today, and then in comes Southern Utah, what are you hoping to accomplish in th those first two games to get you ready for 10 Power 5 opponents in a row? Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to get our team ready, and our coach is trying to get our team ready for 12 Power 5 teams in Ooh, a row. Ooh, okay. So that the mindset isn't that we're, there's no such thing as a warm up. You know, we, we uh, Sam Houston, uh, their coach, Casey Keeler, is a great coach, and they, they've won a national championship at FCS level. Sure, recently. Uh, yeah, recently. And so you're looking at the, the things that he's done, and he's actually won national championship at Delaware when he was the head coach there. So they have a championship coaching staff and mindset. So you can't take anyone lightly. Uh, and, and, more than that, it's like we want to be at our best 12 opportunities. We only get 12 guaranteed, right? So if we do that right, I, I feel like we have a good chance at, at creating more. But um, you, you can't have the mindset of, okay, we'll see how it feels and all that. No, we, we've got to get after it from the very beginning. And our goal is to play our best 12 times. And that, that it, I know you mentioned P5 level 10 in a row, but we're, we have to have that mindset of being P5 level 12 in a row. Certainly last year, uh, you probably wanted the third and fourth down kind of conversion number to be a little higher, third and short uh, specifically. What's been done to sort of address that with the O-line and the running backs at this point? Yeah, I mean, uh, getting a big back that can run over some people is, is a start, and then having a physical alignment that can block people is, is a start. But also, scheme-wise, there's a lot of things that I know A-Rod uh, and the staff worked on trying to improve in, in the short yardage. Uh, third and fourth specifically, but uh, we saw some improvement in our practice and, and um, uh, you know, my, my, my goal is to, we have one of the best punters in, in, in the country and so we can really flip the field 
We but, just talked about that. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, I, but I'm an aggressive person. I like yeah. to go for it on fourth down. So w the, the goal is to see what would be best for the team rather than um, getting emotional and saying, well, let's, let's get after it. Let's go. And it's, there's, there's, there's different levels of aggression, but then there's also uh, being, being, uh, you know, having the strategy be working your favor. I think in the bowl game we kind of did that because we had to. We didn't have our quarterback. We were going with a, a third-string quarterback at the time, so we had to kind of position it to put ourselves in the best position to win. Uh, that's the most important thing for us to win. So depending on what we decide, uh, we'll have to make those decisions really quickly. But I feel comf more comfortable with the short yardage um, system on our team uh, now than I did uh, a year ago. And we'll just see how it works out. But, but we also have the comfort of knowing that, that we have a guy that can flip the field with his leg. We'll finish with this. Uh, I know that the, the Micah Harper injury certainly hits home for you as a head coach. And he's been awesome on social media and, and his posts and just the, the kind of the optimism and the, and the faith that he's showing there. But it, it leaves an unanswered question in the safeties group. Um, maybe it's Ethan Slade, maybe it's Tanner Wall, maybe it's Raider DeMuni to join Malik Moore and Talon Alfrey. But how do you see that position playing out with Micah not available this season? Yeah, I mean, it, it always hurts losing uh, uh, really good players and playmakers. And so we, we definitely, uh, it's an unfortunate part of the game. So sometimes it, those injuries happen and, uh, you know, it, it, it hurts not having Michael with us um, on the field. But he can be with us and, and contribute in other ways. But then, and especially mentoring the, the young uh, safeties that haven't had a lot of reps and experience in games. But uh, we feel good about the depth there. And I feel good that Jay Hill coaches that position specifically. And so any deficiencies that he may see that we have, whether it's lack of experience or um, playmaking ability, I think there's tons of talent there. Um, Jay's on top of it, you know, and I feel really conf uh, confident that he'll get it done the right way. And so far since the injury, we, we're seeing a lot of really good things happen from that room. And uh, I think there's a bunch of playmakers there, and you named a, a good good number of them. But We'll see what happens, and uh, like I said, Jay Hill—that's his—that's his expertise is the back backfield, sure. and and definitely with the safety. So it'll be exciting to see how they respond. And, re and real quick, Will Farron, you feeling good about the kicking game right now with him? I do, and and you know we put a lot of stress on the on him and Matthias in the spring, and we made him kick in like the the worst position possible when the media showed up, <laughs> and it was windy and. And Good not, luck, not, not, practice. And <laughs> yeah, and, and, and this, but this is what K-pop does. Uh, Kelly Papinga is a great coach, and he knows that the season is, you know, months away. When he did this in spring, and he knew that he had to get competition rolling, and I could tell you that they took the off season a little bit more, uh, with a little bit more um, ag aggressiveness to trying to get better and urgency, and then we, we're starting to see it now. And I don't, I can't make predictions because kicking games are always different, but. I can tell you, I feel a lot better now than I did um, in spring, and I feel really comfortable with the group. But I, most importantly, I feel really good about uh, their coach, and, and I think K-pop's got got things under control. All right, fourth and two on the 33 against Sam Houston. What are you doing? You don't have to answer that. <laughs> Which 33? <laughs> the analytics say go. <laughs> Which the analytics say go. I love that you yeah. even asked that question. Which yeah. 33? <laughs> Maybe we'll go for it on our own 33. Uh, coach, if you do lose your voice. Uh, may I recommend the medicine ball from Starbucks? Okay. okay. We're big medicine okay. ball fans, yeah. Uh, or you can recommend it to Jay, too. Like it, If I lose my voice, it'll be because I'm screaming for excitement and energy <laughs> love it. in, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium with The Rock. So it'll be it. a lot of fun. Be awesome. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate you guys. Go Kooks. <laughs> Go.